welcome viewers and subscribers welcome back to my channel welcome back to another video a pleasant good afternoon to you all so in today's video i am going to share with you some tips on what you should do before you start to produce your working drawings or start to design your building so upon you graduating from high school or university there are several steps that you should do before you actually start your building drawings and these steps are not necessarily shared with you while you're at those institutions so you have to wait until you get into the working world for you to learn those procedures because when I just leave a certain institution, there are certain things that I didn't know. And, you know, I, I have made a lot of mistakes until I learn for myself. So if you're a prospective draftsman or a prospective young architect just getting into the field, I think this is a video for you. So... As usual, if you are a first time viewer of this channel, I am asking you to subscribe, hit the notification bell so that when I upload a video, you can know. I want you to uh, share the video and leave a comment. And uh, one other thing, one other thing that I want to point out, I want persons who are watching the videos to communicate because when you communicate with me it gives me more encouragement to do more videos so stay tuned for this video So in order to prepare your working drawings as a first time draft person or prospective architect, if this is your first drawing, the first thing you want to request from your prospective client is the title of the land, right? Because what the title stipulates, the title is going to tell you what type of structure can be designed on the land. The second important feature of the title is that the title is going to give you, the draft person, the different setback of the building to the property line. So some title will give you the setback from the eave and some title will give you the setback from the building. And what is the building eave? The building eave is what we call the overhang, the roof overhang. So you set back your building from the eave to the side boundary, from the eave to your back boundary, and also from the eave to the center line of the road. And the title is going to stipulate to you how much you should set back the building from those respective boundaries. Right, some title may give you also the setback from the edge of the building itself, but that is why it is very important that you read the title carefully and you will know how to proceed. The third important feature of the title, and as a young person getting into the field, this is very, very critical for you to know. The title establish ownership, right? So you would want to design your building and draw your building for a person that is the rightful owner of that property, right? And you want to ensure that the same name that you're doing the drawings for is the same name that is reflected on the title because you do not want to go and produce a drawings, right? And then 
on the drawings is one name and on the type is another name. The Paris Council is going to ask you to rectify discrepan that discrepancy. So you need to tidy up that before you get into that. That was one of my mistakes when I just start into the drafting business. I used to make those mistakes. So look out for that. So for those of you who have never seen a title before, I'm going to sh show you what a title looks like. So this is what the title looks like. So here, so a title looks like this. So you, I don't think this is really necessary to read all of it, but you know, I'm not going to go through the, what is written here now, but if you, you know, want to know more, when you get your title from your owner, you read it and I, and I implore you to read it more than once and make notes. So the second part of the title, which is quite critical, is the restrictive covenant. And I tell you how important the restrictive covenants are. So this title has, I think, 17 restrictive covenants right and if you pay attention to to note to 13 right 13 right here this is is where it where it says no building other than one private dwelling house with appropriate outbuildings thereto shall be erected on the said land right so if you read your title and you see information like that and the and the client comes to you I want you to do an apartment complex or a multifamily complex or a public building. That's a no-no because the title here stipulated item 13 that no building other than one private dwelling house with appropriate outbuildings thereto shall be erected on the land. Right? And I think if I let me look for the the, the setback of this building. I think, let me see if I can find it. I think somewhere here it tells you, right. So if you look at note, note three, it tells us that no new building other than a permanent structure, structure shall be erected within 12.19 meters of the center line of the reserve roads, right? So that's another critical piece of information so you know that when you're doing this building you should set out your building at least 12.19 meters i think 12.19 meters works out to be somewhere in the region of 40 feet so you want to carefully read your restrictive covenants carefully so that you know the setbacks from your respective boundaries and also you know the setback of the building from the center line of the road. You can also, if 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 I'm gonna put you on the right path now, you usually take your setback from the eave, right? Take your setback from the eave, and the eave is the overhang of the building, the roof overhang. So you normally do your setback from the eave to the side, to the back, and to the center line of the roadway. Another document that you should request from your owner, if the owner does not have a title, you can also request the sales agreement. And let me show you what a sales agreement looks like. So, this is what a sales agreement looks like. As you can see here, agreements of sales so this you can read through this and this is also another proof of ownership so the sales agreements can be used as a substitute for the title so this is what a sales agreement look like so in the events if the client client cannot produce produce the title the client can also produce the agreement for sale yes and in addition to the sales agreement so you have the title 
or the sales agreement, the next important document, which is very, very critical to request from your owner, is the survey ID report. So <clears throat> let me show you what the survey report looks like. So this is the survey ID reports. So this is what a survey ID report looks like. So this is the shape of the line here, right? So this is what a survey's ID report looks like. Another important document that you can request in addition to your survey report. So usually when you're doing your drawings, right, you should visit the site. And why is it necessary for you to visit the site? You visit the site, you know, to determine the orientation of the building and the site. You visit the site to see the contour of the land, if the land is sloped to the back, to the side or to the front. And also if the, you know, the general surrounding have any features that you might want the building to reflect in order to, you know what I mean, or to where to place your balcony, what features you should utilize on the land to enhance the building or to improve the aesthetic of the building. So if you go to the site, right and you observe that the site is sloped right you can request from the owner to get a surveyor involved to do what is called a topographical survey so i am going to show you what a topographical survey looks like so a topographical survey looks like this so so these are all the contour lines on the property here, right? So depending on how you set your building, set out your building, whatever line your building touch, that's the elevation at that point. So I will have to do a video, a separate video to show you how to interpret the different elevations on your, on your project site. But this is what a topographical survey looks like. And I want to point out to you too that some clients, they do not have the financial resources to get a topographical survey done. Because oftentimes I get a topographical survey from my surveyor and the cost is somewhere between 80 to 100,000 Jamaican dollars. So I'm imploring you if you visit the site and the site is relative to the flat, do not ask the client to get a topographical survey done, right? If the land is flat, or uh, even if the land is gently slope, the slope is not that great. Do not ask the client to get a topographical survey done because some clients do not have the money or the financial resources to do that. Yes, it would be ideal to get the topographical survey done if the land is slope because you know if the land is gently slope the 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 finished flow level is going to be at a certain height and you will want to reflect that so that the quantity surveyor can accurately calculate the amount of concrete blocks that you're going to need to complete the building but for me i have been doing it for so long generally i go to a site and i visit if the land is very is, is gently slope i can basically estimate how much slow is it? Or if, if you have a good builder, you can carry the builder to the site and ask the builder to do level. Just drive a peg from the center line of the road and offset it to what the title said. And you take, if you estimate the length of the building, you can, from when you take that center peg and you stretch your card line and you hit where the building is going to start, you Put your car line there and you level it to the length of your building that you're going to design and you measure the slope, the, the, you measure the, the, the depth of the slope and then you can get some idea as to how much the land is slow. Those are little things you can do to eliminate costs and to reduce the costs on the, costs on the client. Because some, the typical Jamaican doesn't have the money to do 
all of these things. You know what I mean? But if you're going to do like a big commercial building, I, I doubt that as a young draft person, you're going to get that to do. But in the event, you can do little things. You can check, you can get, you can check your own levels, you know, in order in and to eliminate the client employing the services of a, of a surveyor to pay them that amount of money. So these are some tips that I'm sharing with you. And another thing that I want to share with you, the reason why it is important to have your surveyor diagram. The first thing you should do as a draft person, after you have gotten your proof of ownership and you have gotten your surveyor diagram, you, the first thing you should do drawing wise is to plot your surveyor's diagram, right? Some surveyor's diagram comes with the field notes and you can, you get, you get the bearings and you can just put in the, the bearings into your AutoCAD program, put in the distance and you can plot the diagram. The reason that is important is that you do not want to design and do up your design. And when you do the design, when you plot the surveyor's diagram, the building cannot fit with the respective setbacks. So that was a learning curve for me too. You know, just jump in and start to draw. And then when you're drawing, ready to fit the building to the site on the surveyor's diagram, when you do your necessary setbacks, it cannot fit on the building. And you have to understand that your site too is going to have drainage. So there's a particular distance from the building, you should have your septic tank and your absorption pit or your tile field or your rebed. There's just, I think the minimum distance you should have your septic tank away from your, your building is, I think, around 20 to 30 feet, right? But if your land is big, you know, if you have, you know, upwards of a quarter acre, you can play around with that and you can even push it as further as 30 feet. But those are necessary tips I'm giving you as a young draft person. Do not draw the floor plan, right? And design your building before you actually fit it on the side. So when you draw up your survey diagram, you take out the biggest square that you can get with all the necessary setback and you design within that square, right? So you know that when you produce your floor plan, it can fit with the necessary restriction and you're not in breach one last thing before i end this video is that when you're drawing your floor plan ensure to have or to ensure to envision what the roof is going to look like because you do not want to draw your floor plan and then you can't fit a roof over the building so you have to envision what your roof is going to look like right so the more Difficult are you make the floor plan, the more projections you have, the more difficult the roof is going to be. And probably you have to slab some era, you have to roof some era for the roof to work, right? So always draw your floor plan with the roof in mind. You do not want to do that. And that was a mistake I used to make as a young draft person. Drop the floor plan and then I can't fit a roof over it. So bear that in mind that when you start to draw your floor plan, envision the type of roof that you're gonna put over the building. So I hope this video serves the purpose for young, young people who want to get into the profession and want to draw their first building plan. If in the event that I've, meant, I've not mentioned everything, you leave a comment, ask me any question, and if I have the answer, I will be more than happy to share it with you. So I've come to the end of this video. I will catch you in the next video. Big up yourself and enough respect. Thank you.